My name is Jane Holdsworth. I'm Vice President of R&D at Cancer Genetics. So MAPA was a product that we developed a few years ago now and it was designed in order to be able to profile genomic gain and loss in mature B-cell neoplasms. It's been our flagship for, for these neoplasms and it's been developed for chronic lymphocytic leukemia, its counterpart SLL, it's been developed now for mantle cell lymphoma, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and also more recently follicular lymphoma. The reason for developing this is that copy number changes such as gain and loss are well-known non-random hallmarks of cancer, these cancers notwithstanding, and they've been shown to have important roles in not only diagnostic sides of these cancers, but also in being able to prognose and give an idea of the outcome that patients may have depending on particular abnormalities that you see in their genomes. In this particular application, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the issue in this cancer is that it's a cancer that is predominantly treated very shortly after it's been diagnosed. And we're reporting out the copy number changes of 15 loci. And those loci we found and have been reported by others to be associated with different outcomes in the disease. This now in this disease is becoming quite important because there are new therapeutic options available to the clinician. Diagnosis of the disease is usually made upon a routine pathology and immunohistochemical stains. And in fact, most risk stratification that clinicians do in this disease is based on purely clinical features. It's only in recent years that some molecular genetic alterations have found to be associated with differential outcomes to treatment. And including that is some of the genomic copy number changes that we're evaluating. And that, what, that's, that is what is being associated now with outcome. In terms of validation material and experiments that we have done in order to validate the assay, we have done a mixture of both in-house studies. We have done a mix uh, combined with some in silico analyses on publicly available data sets so that we're, allowed, we're able to validate it across data sets from different institutions where they have treated them re relatively uniformly with RCHOP, the standard care at the moment for, for diffuse large B-cell lymphomas. We've also continuing do, to do our follow-up studies where we do a little bit more of our research into gaining additional data sets to validate our findings. And we're in the process of identifying larger ones and being able to put them into clinical trials. Ultimately, what we'd like to be able to do with this in our, with our research collaborators is to be able to integrate the findings that we're having from this assay in terms of gain and loss of these specific loci and determine how it can be integrated with other clinical, not necessarily just clinical features, but also other laboratory testings that we do, such as rearrangement at the MIC locus, such as immunohistochemical stainings, whether it's a GCB versus non-GCB uh, phenotype based on, or gene expression signature subtype based on immunohistochemical staining. I think once we expand these studies and we can combine the knowledge of all of these tests and integrate them, it'll actually give the clinician a large uh, battery, not battery, a large um, a momentum of assays that can really help them to stratify their patients with respect to outcome and also allow them now in this, in this increasing uh, area of therapeutic options now that are, uh, that are becoming available to the clinician, they can start to integrate these tests, the prognostic value of each of them, so that they can actually use it to give the best possible treatment and, and tailor make it a little bit for that particular patient.